My next guest, David Wenner, he's the president and chief executive of B&G Foods. B&G Foods makes and sells a wide variety of food products, such as B&M baked beans or Tago, or Tago taco shells. They also make a bunch of other stuff, Polliner, <laughs> uh, jellies and jams. And the stock up more than 50 percent since last year, paying a 5 percent dividend. How have they figured out how to do this in an economy which is challenged? Well, David, let's find out. Good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Thank you, Tim. Good to be so here. So have you done this? When we were talking during the break that the last time you and I spoke, there was not only a B&G Foods stock, a plain equity, but there was also a kind of a hybrid, a combination of a stock and a bond. You got rid of that. The stock has moved up. What's been going on? Well, a lot of good things. First off, in a bad economy, the food business is not a bad place to be. People still need to eat. And when you have the staples that we have, they're going to eat more of those kind of things. So, so talking about Underwood is one of your brands, right? But, right? Ortega, Ortega, Ortega is red hot. You know, is doing very, very well. Hispanic foods are, are very popular. And we have very two very strong Hispanic brands with Ortega and Las Palmas. Simplifying the financial structure helped a lot. You know, put all of our stock in one security. People understood the structure better. So that's great from an institutional point of view. We have institutional investors who now invest in our stock who wouldn't before. But it also makes it simpler for a retail investor. You know, it's very clear to see what the yield's going to be. And in the context of getting rid of that other security, we called the bonds, refinanced at a lower interest rate, so our earnings per share are up dramatically as well. And you've been making some acquisitions. You did a recent right. one. Tell we me about did, this. We just did a small acquisition and, uh, called Don Pepino. Uh, it's actually called Violet Foods. It has a, a tomato called Sclafani, that, that brand. Based in, in New a, Jersey, right? It's based in New Jersey, yeah. It's a nice tuck-in acquisition. It covers the same retail and food service uh, ground that we cover with our other brands. They've also got uh, Underwood, as I mentioned, right. also Emerald's, Trappies, the uh, the spicy right. sauce uh, business, and also you've got Cream of Wheat. You've been coming out with these recipes. I was noticing there's a Cinnabon Cream of Wheat. Right. We, we've uh, worked with Cinnabon, licensed the name from them, came out with a new instant Cream of Wheat product that is just knock your socks off. Uh, the flavor really delivers what you would expect from something with the Cinnabon name. That's rolling out around the country with uh, as full of support as we've ever done. Uh, here locally, we did a front page coupon on, on the Star Ledger in New Jersey, for instance, on that to tell consumers that that existed. So we're, we're getting stronger from a marketing point of view and we're putting out a lot of good new products. Well, no, it's also you're putting out that recipe for the uh, streusel coffee cake, <laughs> the Br'er Rabbit streusel right, coffee right. cake. Made me a little hungry just reading about it. What are the issues now related to cost inputs? Because we read every day and we hear about the increase in the cost of wheat, the cost of sugar, coffee. What's going on in your input costs? Well, our input costs are, are relatively calm. Uh, and it's a mixed bag. I mean, we do buy wheat for cream of wheat, obviously, and that's, that's going up, but it's not going to go up for us until the latter part of 2011. And we've really learned our lessons in 2007, 2008, and cushioned ourselves and really protected ourselves from cost increases on a pretty much a 12-month horizon. So keeping those gross margins stable? Actually probably improving a little bit uh, in next year as, as we still see very modest cost increases, almost none for our business. And, and that's plus and minus depending on the brand. And we think we're going to increase, uh, we're going to continue to sell a better mix of products that'll pull our margins up. What uh, kinds of acquisitions are you looking for in the future? Well, we'd love to do more cream of wheat or take a types of acquisitions. Those are the sweet spots where we can take a brand that's a meaningful size for us, invest in that brand and really deliver in terms of improved sales, improved profitability. These smaller acquisitions are very economical for us. We can buy them at a good value. They fit what we do in terms of the distribution and the sales. So they're good too, but you know the cream of wheat type, type acquisitions are more meaningful to the business. All right, well, you're making me hungry, even for some of those B&G <laughs> pickles. I want right. to thank you very much, David Winter, coming to us as the chief executive of B&G Foods.